Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we have Alex with us. Alex is the co-founder of Locan Monero. Locan Monero allows you to buy and sell Monero by using cash or other online payment methods. And today we are going to talk to him more about his project and what in some interesting things that he's up to um, and his other co-founders are up to in Locan Monero. So first of all, Alex, thanks a lot for accepting our invitation for the call. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. So like, can you, uh, give a brief background, like, because you, uh, are obviously anonymous, you don't want to come forward. Uh, but still, can you like give a brief background of like how you became interested in Monero and why did you actually start local Monero? Well, uh, we find Monero interesting because, uh, it was, at that point, when we were starting local Monero, it was the only fungible currency, uh, the only fungible cryptocurrency available on the market, um, where fungibility is defined as a coin that, or or, or any currency that is um, uh, interchangeable with any other unit of the currency. So, for example, Bitcoin is not fungible because uh, one Bitcoin is not interchangeable with every other Bitcoin. Since if uh, a Bitcoin was involved in some sort of, uh, let's say, uh, black market activity and it is known that a certain Bitcoin address is uh, somehow connected to any illegal activity, then the Bitcoins that come from that address uh, are tainted Bitcoins and nobody would ever accept them because they don't want to become a suspect in a criminal investigation. So mm -hmm. the fungibility aspect of Monero is uh, what drew us to Monero and the the reason we decided to start local Monero because at that point there was no service that allowed people to trade Monero in the same way that users trade Bitcoin on uh, sites like localbitcoins.com. Mm -hmm. So we saw the uh, sector of the market uh, being unfilled and we filled it. Okay. Okay. And like you, uh, you feel that, Monero really has a use case, like say for people who want to use the dark market. So you want to use the dark web, um, like people use Monero there. So, uh, do you feel that it really had a use case, right? Uh, no, I, I don't feel that the use case of Monero is, uh, for dark net markets. I, I, I think that the use case of Monero is just as, uh, you would use any other currency basically. You you have let's say uh, cash, right? Uh, I've heard I've heard you you guys have a lot of uh, fun things happening with cash in India, with with some nodes being uh, forbidden and some nodes being replaced. Um, well, the thing about cash is it's fungible, right? You can you can use cash uh, anywhere, and it, cash is inter interchangeable with each other. Mm -hmm. So. Just because you use cash doesn't mean you you are a uh, you are participating in, in any sort of black market or illegal activity. A lot of people uh, like to use cash uh, because it's more convenient for them, or maybe because they want their finances to be private, and that has not necessarily something to do with their finances being illegal, but maybe more to do with um, I don't know. Financial information is, is pretty private uh, all across the board. For example, you know, it, nobody uh, speaks aloud about their salary. Nobody speaks aloud uh, about the, the sort of contracts they sign so that the competitors won't find out about uh, what kind of deal they could have gotten. Uh, I mean, financial information we treat it very confidentially. So mm -hmm. uh, just because we treat it that way doesn't mean we're doing something illegal. Uh, we have plenty of reasons to treat it that way. Maybe we don't want other people to know how much money we have because if other people knew how much money we have, then they would be more likely to uh, try to rob us in the street or maybe um, try to blackmail us somehow, right? So the financial privacy aspect of Monero is something that is completely lacking in Bitcoin uh, and other cryptocurrencies. There are other projects that are coming up right now that may also have the fungibility aspect. Right. Um, but like a Mimble at, Wimble at or like point, a coin join, right? That's right. That's right. Mimble Wimble is, is what I wanted to say. Um, 
we'll, we'll see how that plays out because it's a very new protocol and we, we haven't yet been able to see it in, in action. Um, but for now, I think Monero is the only choice uh, for someone who desires financial uh, confidentiality if they use cryptocurrencies. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that brings us to an interesting question, right? So um, uh, Team Bitcoin and the Lightning Network team, they're they are already working on the implementation of CoinJoin and whatnot to bring fungibility on layer two. Whereas, uh, Bit, uh, sorry, Monero supports fungibility and on, on the layer one, right? So um, how do you think that this will make a difference in case of Monero? Uh, well, layer two solutions, um, I mean, it's, it's better than having no confidentiality solutions, uh, right? I, I would much rather Bitcoin at least have one layer that's, that's uh, confidential, it's private. But still, you have to understand that a layer two solution is not a complete solution, just like a layer two solution was not and is not a, a complete solution when it comes to the internet in general. The, the base protocol of the internet, TCP IP, uh, has no sort of inbuilt uh, privacy protections. The, the privacy protections came when we started encrypting our traffic in the internet using stuff like uh, SSL, right? We, we, when we would visit websites, now we, we would visit websites that have HTTPS, which encrypts the traffic between the user and the server. But, but it's still not a perfect solution. As long as the base layer is not private, you cannot guarantee privacy. There will always be sort of a cloud of privacy and a cloud of of uh, transparency that happens and it's much easier to focus especially if you are some sort of a uh, adversary to privacy it's much easier to just focus on the uh, information that goes in and out of the privacy cloud mm -hmm. the, 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 the best way to achieve privacy is if the entire network is private from from layer one up until layer infinity um, and layer one solutions, I think, um, will never be able to, uh, or sorry, what I mean is la layer two solutions will never be able to completely replace having privacy on, on layer one. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so like we have talked a bit about the philosophical aspects of like Monero and Bitcoin. Now I like want to talk mm -hmm. about uh, like Logan Monero. So like, can you like for the people, so many of our audience might have used local Monero, but m many of them might not have used local Monero. So like how, what can you like walk us through, like how's the, like the setup of using a local, mon of local Monero for a user? Uh, is local Bitcoins popular in India? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Indeed, yeah. yeah. A lot of my friends and like, and like everyone uses local Bitcoin here. Especially after the, uh, uh, the sorry, especially after the central bank ban, right. there is no avenue to buy Bitcoin using your bank account. So you have to like ultimately resort to like places like local Bitcoin and local Monero. Right, right. Okay, well that, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, I'm sure most of your audience then will, will, will be familiar with local Bitcoins. So local Monero is essentially the same thing as local bitcoins. We have the same sort of uh, uh, flow, user flow, when it comes to trading, when it comes to buying or selling Monero. Mm -hmm. uh, just imagine the local bitcoins with Monero instead of Bitcoin, and, and you pretty much have local Monero. Right, right, okay. Um, and like you, what you have a custodial wallet there, right? Like uh, yeah. local Bitcoin. It's not a non-custodial wallet in the website. It's not. No. Okay. Okay, and uh, even like your business model is similar to local bitcoins. That's right. Yes, okay, we, so we have the same. Uh, we even have the same um, uh, trade fee that local bitcoins has, which is one percent. Okay, and uh, and like when say someone moves their Monero from their from the wallet of local Monero, you charge them some transaction fees, like the wallet transaction fees as well, right? 
Uh, we we charge uh, right on on the withdrawal. There is a withdrawal fee, uh, and it's slightly above the normal Monero network withdrawal fee mm -hmm. uh, because we have to cover for the cold wallet management. Uh, we have okay. to transfer in and out of the cold wallet uh, when people need to withdraw them. So. Uh, there is a slight increase uh, over the standard network fee, but the standard network fee in Monero is already so low; it's 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 around uh, I think a fraction of a cent right now. It's uh, really cheap, so it's uh, not even noticeable in most cases. See, like um, Monero is like picking up. Like in, you see in countries like let's say Turkey or uh, Argentina, where where the local currency is collapsing. Do you see like Monero picking up? Like it doesn't have to be anything specific in general. I guess. Well, uh, I would say that our main markets uh, still remain the uh, United States and, and Great Britain. But we, we do seem to have, uh, whenever there is a currency crisis, say like in Venezuela or, or in um, uh, Turkey, as you just mentioned, uh, th th we do have an uptick in trades uh, from those countries during that time, yes. But I, I would still think that uh, the uptick is not significant, uh, such as to turn a, a previously dormant market into an active one. It's, it's usually, so, since Monero is not a, a very mainstream currency right now, nobody uh, knows it as, as, as well as they know Bitcoin, mm -hmm. uh, especially the kind of people that are just trying to save their money from, from, from the value being wiped out. You know, they don't have time to research all the fungibility and, and uh, right. Bitcoin and like they're like what's the difference uh, they, they just want to get the quickest and easiest solution available and almost always the quickest and easiest solution when it comes to converting your money to uh, cryptocurrencies uh, will we'll go through Bitcoin mm -hmm. um, so because of that I would say that most of our users are, are just normal uh, users who, who, who would uh, trade Monero uh, Without, who would trade Monero um, just like they would trade on local bitcoins? Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. And um, um, you said that you know uh, Monero has like it has a use case very similar to that of any other currency, right? Um, but it's because of its privacy features. It's obviously like used more by users of the darknet markets, um, right? And, and oh, yeah, that's that's inevitable. That's inevitable, correct. Then, um, that's what it is, right? And then um, that brings the concern of the regulatory bodies in various countries that they don't want too much money to be going um, uh, into, into these kind of things, right? And we saw that in Japan, um, a lot of the exchanges had to delist Monero just because the regulation or the government in Japan didn't want that to happen. So do you think issues like these uh, might bring... Um, uh, problems for adoption of Monero as a currency in general? No, I, I don't think so. I think the governments that choose to restrict uh, so-called privacy coins are, are making uh, a mistake because, uh, in, in, in my opinion, privacy coins, once, once the technology becomes advanced enough such that the transaction volume and the, the transaction speed and, and the block verification speed and the uh, disk space and the processing power that is required for running all of, all of the software and the wallets. Once once those things go down, and they will go down eventually, because right now blockchain technology is on uh, at, it, at its very early stages. So this is, uh, I mean, this is like you know having the, the one of the first computers that take up the whole room, and now we have tiny computers that fit in our pockets. Uh, right now, blockchain is at a stage where the you know the, the computer takes the whole room. It's, it's, it's sort of getting smaller and smaller, uh, but it's still a long way to go, I think. But once, once the technology becomes fast enough and, and slim enough, uh, such that it's, it's going to be very convenient for all people to adopt it uh, and not require much technical knowledge, I think people will naturally gravitate towards these sort of payments because uh, I, I'm sure by that time the transaction fees will also be low, very low. I'm, I'm, I'm almost uh, certain that they will be lower than whatever uh, the current market, uh, uh, sort of the, the industry captains of financial transactions, you know, like MasterCard and Visa, 
or PayPal, um, I think the transaction fees would become even lower than what those companies can offer. Um, and people just want, will be attracted to the lower fees and they will be attracted to the fact that if they want to send someone money, you know, they don't have to go through a very rigorous uh, verification process and uh, providing documents and the bank giving you a call and asking you a bunch of questions and all that. They, if they want to transfer some money to their grandma that lives in the other part of the country or, or the other part of the world, they can just open up their wallet, transfer, and, and be done with it, not think about it, and not pay exorbitant fees. And I'm sure that in the contest between privacy coins and non-privacy coins, unless the non-privacy coins would be able to have much lower fees than privacy coins, but I don't think that's going to happen, uh, then uh, I'm sure privacy coins will win out in, in, in that, that sort of competition because they provide that additional layer of, of protection through privacy, right? The additional layer that when, when you pay someone with your wallet, you know, you go to the store and you buy some apples and the cashier, you, you know, you scan a QR code or something on, on the cashier side and uh, you pay for the apples, but at the same time, the cashier finds out your wallet address and then she knows how much salary you, know, you have, uh, how much money you have in total, how often uh, you buy apples and from whom and how much do you pay for those other apples because they see that there are transactions with other grocery stores and they can sort of deduce that you're buying from them as well. All, all this sort of financial information that puts you at a disadvantage, uh, having it uh, obscured through privacy is, I, I think is gonna be, even if the transaction costs will be higher than non-privacy coins, uh, I think, the people would be willing to pay those higher transaction costs up to a certain point, of course. I mean, if it's a couple of orders, orders of magnitude higher, maybe, maybe it won't work. But uh, you get what I'm saying. So the, um, the governments that try to fight against this, I think they're just, they're just fighting progress, right? Just like they tried to, find, uh, tried to fight against uh, Bitcoin initially. Uh, and, and they cited the same concerns, the, you know, the terrorism, the dark net markets, the uh, whatever, illegal activity. Uh, but now you see Ohio's state government uh, accepting Bitcoin as, as a payment option for paying uh, state taxes, if, if, if you heard of that. Uh, and uh, the Swiss government is selling Bitcoins in their uh, train tickets and all of that stuff followed the initial sort of repudiation of cryptocurrencies, of blockchain, of Bitcoin. And I think Monero will, will go through the same cycle. They're going to throw the same uh, kitchen sink that they threw at Bitcoin. They're going to pick that up. They're going to throw it at Monero. And it's, it's eventually people are just going to get used to the fact that, you know, this is, this is just the new status quo, that we have a currency that has these sorts of features. And if, if the government accepted the status quo, not try to find and get fight against it and create economic inefficiencies. Uh, they can actually, I think, uh, come out as winners in this because if if you take Monero for example, uh, Monero has the ability for you to provide a view key for your wallet. So, for example, uh, if if the government for some reason needs to audit your finances, let's say they think that you're not paying your taxes, for example, uh, you can provide the government with the view key for your wallet. And that way the government knows what sort of transactions came into your wallet and they can see that, oh yes, you had paid your taxes. And uh, so th this is called, um, th this, is, this, is this is a way of compliance uh, with, with uh, whatever authority that you may encounter. But this is a compliance that will be dependent upon the consent of the user that is being, um, that is complying to, to, the, to, to the request. So un unlike Bitcoin, where your financial information is available, whether you like it or not, to anyone, uh, in here you will be able to selectively show your financial information in order to comply with uh, legitimate requests from legitimate uh, authorities. And that way everyone is happy 
and nobody has to know, uh, you know, uh, or uh, rather nobody outside of the legitimate authorities have to know uh, what your salary is or, or how often, uh, you know, you buy stuff from Amazon uh, or how often you donate to certain political parties that may not be uh, popular amongst your friends or something like that. Yep, yep. Um, and like uh, you started talking about like what Monero can actually allow people to do um, in the future. So have you been following like some cool technical things that the core Monero team have come up with like bulletproofs, um, Covery and all these features and like what, what do you feel about that? Uh, you said in the future, do you mean the view keys? Because the view keys aren't a future feature. They're actually, they're, they, they've been from, almost from the beginning. No, no. Uh, so, I, I, yeah, obviously that, I, I was talking about like some technical features that will allow Monero to like scale um, and like have more. Oh, yeah. I, you talk about bulletproofs, right? So bulletproofs is just one one sort of aspect of, of the improvement of technology that is slowly rolling around. Um, this is, I mean, uh, indicative, I think, of the fact that the, the size of the computer is starting to shrink down from, from room size to pocket size. Uh, bulletproofs is, is one thing. Uh, Convery doesn't have to do with um, the scalability or the speed as much right. as it has to do with uh, privacy. Right. Uh, Coveries for uh, securing the IP address of uh, the, the nodes, uh, or, or rather the wallet broadcasting the uh, transaction. Um, Covery is an, it's an important aspect, of course, of, of Monero, uh, but this has nothing to do with, with the scalability. But yeah, we do follow it, and um, we follow it hoping to see faster, better, uh, more more privacy, uh, and and it is coming in every year, uh, every every six months. Th there is a a uh, hard fork that happens on the Monero network, mm -hmm. and this is actually one of the wonderful, more more smart features I think of, of the Monero community uh, is that instead of having huge civil wars like they do in Bitcoin, or uh, now recently with Bitcoin Cash. And Bitcoin, uh, what's, what's it called? SV, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the the Monero community seems to have avoided that kind of a that kind of a contentious hard fork issue because in Monero there are hard forks every six months mm -hmm. uh, that update the protocol with the latest and greatest uh, features. Like recently, we did with uh, bulletproofs. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, um, a general question, right? What's your favorite Monero wallet? Uh, the the official Monero CLI wallet. <laughs> it's my favorite Monero wallet. Okay, don't you like using the uh, My Monero by Fluffy Pony and his team? Uh, I think My Monero isn't uh, made by Fluffy Pony anymore. I think the... Uh, head of my Monero right now is uh, Paul, Shapiro. Paul Shapiro. Yeah, Paul Shapiro, right. And, right. And Genic. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, it, no, it's not that I don't like my Monero. It's, it's a great service. It's just that uh, I personally only use Monero Wallet CLI uh, with, with hardware wallets. I think that's the, the safest way to go. Okay. Okay, okay. And so, like, how... Um, how do you compare yourself to like local bitcoins? Uh, like, how do you see yourself? Uh, you 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 just see yourself as a Monero alternative, right? On the one hand, if if I just had a couple of seconds to explain what local Monero is, I would just say, yeah, we're just a uh, a local Bitcoin for Monero. But mm -hmm. if if I had to go in, into a deeper comparison between our two services. Mm -hmm. um, I think what differentiates us from local Bitcoins is that we have a, a, a stronger focus on privacy. Uh, we, we uh, for example, we don't um, log as much information as local Bitcoins does. We don't require uh, 
uh, users to provide an email when they sign up, for example, whereas local coins, uh, we don't do KYC. And I, I don't think we'll ever start doing KYC unless we, we run into a situation where regardless of which jurisdiction we, uh, we are incorporated, uh, we're still going to have to file some KYC. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, that, you know, we're, we'll have no choice but to start doing KYC, but I don't see, I, I don't see that as a uh, significant uh, possibility myself. The, uh, the other aspects that differentiate us is that we, we like to add uh, cool new features. Like, for example, we, we have integration with Morph Token uh, that allows people to withdraw from their local Monero wallet uh, not Monero, but other cryptocurrencies, or or deposit other cryptocurrencies that will be converted into Monero uh, and deposited on the Monero wallet. Uh, we uh, we provide um, Telegram notifications, uh, which is something I think local bitcoins doesn't do. It. Last time I checked, uh, because a lot of sort of people or a lot of services when whenever they uh, want their users to get push notifications on their phones or on their mobile devices, they usually require them to download the uh, official app for the uh, service. But uh, we sort of don't like the philosophy of having an app for every single thing. Uh, and giving it a, a bunch of permissions and stuff like that. We, we thought a, a smarter thing to do would be to implement push notifications through Telegram, which is a messenger that, uh, well, not most people have it, but I think a, a, a large amount of people have it. And sort, certainly the people who are more privacy conscious. Uh, yeah, and like exactly in crypto, kind of, uh, I think in everyone in crypto uses Telegram, like 89. Probably, yeah, probably everyone in crypto. Yep. Um, so having push notifications through Telegram seemed like the, you know, the best sort of way to achieve the push notifications at the same time as not having to require a user to download the app. Uh, so that's, that's how we did it. Um, yeah, the, the, these are the sorts of things that differentiate us, I think. Um, we, we we're always looking for cool new things we can do with the site. I think we move faster, much faster than local bitcoins. When, whenever local bitcoins uh, has some sort of uh, feature request that they get from their users, they usually take a, you know a month or two to implement it if it's a really good request and they think it's really worth it. But whenever we get requests for for new features, if if we think it's a cool good request, we our uh, implementation time is usually like within a, within a week. Most of the time, it's it's within 24 hours. If we're really, if it's in like an easy feature to implement, we do it really quickly. We we reply to tickets uh, within 24 hours always. Uh, we provide uh, support at, over email as well, and we reply there within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're much more active on social media, I think, than local bitcoins. We we uh, we monitor all the subreddits that are related to Monero, mm -hmm. uh, R Monero, R XMR Trader. Well, not all of them, but like the most important ones. Right. Uh, and we, we, if there's any, any topic or thread that, that is uh, somehow related to us, usually we would, we would reply in the comments or, or we would open a thread. Um, yeah, I think that would be it. We, we offer support in Telegram as well, actually. I don't think local Bitcoins does that last time I checked. Yep. Uh, we have a forum like local bitcoins does. Uh, mm -hmm. We have multiple languages like local bitcoins does. Not as many though. We we, we still like the Korean that local bitcoins has. Um, yeah. Okay. That's that's off the top of my head. Yep. Yep. And so, like, uh, how do you? Um, what sort of rule do you feel that sites like say local Monero and local Bitcoin? have for adoption like we definitely have a use case in like countries like india um in which like uh, yeah. the government has banned banks from supporting cryptocurrency exchanges but yeah so what mm -hmm. what is or what what do you feel that uh, you bring to the ecosystem 
Well, exactly that. The, the ability for people that don't have access to traditional means of acquiring Monero to acquire Monero directly uh, through fiat without having to go through Bitcoin, which uh, might cause them to lose on the transaction fees, on the withdrawal fees, on the deposit fees. There's so many fees, uh, extra fees that you have to go through when you buy Monero through first buying Bitcoin. Uh, most people would save a lot of money if, if they went to Monero directly uh, through a service like local Monero. And a lot of people don't have access to exchanges at all. Um, people like uh, people in India that, as you say, the central bank banned these sorts of things. And uh, actually a lot of uh, central banks seem to, seem to be willing to ban these sorts of things uh, for some reason, uh, probably because they don't understand it or, or because they're, they're not willing to maybe capitalize on it as much as they could have. Um, the the main use case is essentially people who don't have access to traditional means. Uh, some kind, a lot of countries actually don't even have people don't even have easy access to bank accounts. Forget about the central bank having a stance on the on the cryptocurrencies. <laughs> some people, like you know, in Africa, they don't even have a good banking ecosystem there uh, they they use uh, other payment methods so kenya actually is, is because of that i think is is uh, one of our big markets um people in kenya like to use our, our website okay makes sense um can you walk us through what's uh, new and upcoming uh, in local monero do you guys have certain features that you plan to add in the future or anything new and cool that that's coming up that you would like to share um, uh, we do have stuff, but we, we're, we're not ready to share it yet. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yep. Um, I think, Alex, we have quite, quite, quite a lot um, for, like, how do you feel that Monero is going to go in the future and, like, things regarding local Monero? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, we are. Thanks a lot for taking the time out uh, to share whatever you can uh, with us. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.